sing with us, would you? In my wrestling and in your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my trouble sea. You are the peace in my trouble sea. In the silence you won't let go. In the questions your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. He's your lighthouse this morning. I hope you're glad for that. The word of the Lord this morning tells us in Psalms, it says, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to our rock of our salvation. Let us come to him with thanksgiving. Let us sing psalms of praise to him. For the Lord is a great God, a great king above all gods. He holds his hands in the depths of the earth and the mightiest mountains. The seas belong to him, for he made it. His hands form the dry land too. Come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God. This is the word of the Lord. We're here to worship the king this morning. Amen. Would you stand with me as we sing the old, old song? Oh, worship the king. Oh, tell of his greatness. Truly, he is a great God. Amen. Sing it with me. Oh, worship the king, all glorious above and grateful. Whose robe is the light 
celebrate he's alive we don't serve a savior who's dead in the grave but he's alive and we celebrate that this morning sing this with me there's a reason why our hearts can be courageous there's a reason why the dead are made alive there's a reason why we share his resurrection here's the reason jesus is That's enough. Have a seat. I know you're excited he's alive, but we'll talk more about that later, all right? Y'all doing all right? You look good. Some of you look good. I'm so glad I'm here this morning, aren't you? I'd rather be here than the best hospital in Jonesboro. Well, we won't even talk about which one that is. You know, we sang just now about our God being a king, and the, 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 the amazing thing about Jesus Christ and, and God is the complexity this next song we're going to sing he's talk, it talks about he's the lion and he's the lamb 
and the complexity of a God who is strong enough to conquer what needs to be conquered, but yet he laid himself down to be given as a sacrifice for our sins. I was looking at that this week, and John Piper had this to say about it. He said, we admire him because of his sovereign dominion over the world, but even more because this dominion was clothed with a spirit of obedience and submission. We love the way he stumped the proud scribes with his wisdom, and we love it even more because he could be simple enough to like children and spend time with them. And we admire him because he could still the storm, but even more because he refused to use that power to get himself down from the cross. That's our Jesus. Amen? The list could go on and on. Do you see what I mean when I say that beauty and excellency in a person is not a simple thing? It's complex. It's a coming together in one person of the perfect balance or proportion of extremely diverse qualities. And that's what makes Jesus Christ so irresistibly admirable and excellent. I'm glad I serve a God today. Yes, he's the lion and he's conquered the battles, but he also gave himself for us. And we celebrate that this morning. Sing this with me. He's coming on the clouds. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. Every chain will break. And every chain will break. As broken hearts declare His praise. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lord. up the gates. So open up the gates, make way before the King of Kings. The God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord?
you glad? And because of that, we can sing together. I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were condemned. I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. Oh, isn't that good? Would you stand as we sing that? I'm forgiven. Because you were forsaken, I'm accepted, you were condemned, I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again, I like this part, amazing love. my king you are my king you are my king Jesus you are my king Jesus you are my king I'll lift it out of me this morning for that love the love that sent a son to a cross for each of us have you thought about that this week I don't know about your week it's been a long week for some but to know that his love is there for us every step of the way as we go to prayer there are several names in here that you might want to take a note of and make look at maybe circle something that you put on your refrigerator each week that you can highlight a few names there let me add one there I think pastor Aaron would appreciate a little prayer if you haven't noticed maybe that he's been sitting down a little bit more than normal he's usually a little bit more energetic than this and Thursday afternoon he decided to stand up and his knee didn't want to stand up with him and so he's been in a little bit of extra pain, and he would definitely appreciate your prayers. Pastor Ken and Miss Linda also would. As you can tell, they're not here with us this morning. They are in Oklahoma City at a baby dedication for a granddaughter, number three, and uh, are enjoying a little bit of time, I'm sure, away. And several names on your bulletin there as well, just to make sure that you circle a few of those and highlight a few of those. 
As we prepare for prayer, the praise team is going to sing again, and the altars are open for this morning for you to come and spend a little extra time with God. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor you. Amazing love, how can it be that you, my King, would die for me? Amazing love, I know it's true. It's my joy to honor God, that's why we're here this morning, to give you honor and praise and glory due to your name, to acknowledge who you are, that you are the God above all gods, you are the king of all kings, you are the almighty, that's why we're here, to worship you, to show our love to you, to fellowship with one another because of who you are. Lord, this morning we lift up to you names in our bulletin. Some that we see week in and week out. We just ask right now, God, that you would go to those areas. We ask you would go with Miss Pam right now in that hospital room, that you would continue to touch and work and help doctors figure out exactly what's going on. Give her the strength that she needs here this morning. Lord, we ask that you would be with Pastor Aaron this morning and the things that he's been dealing with. Not something that he wanted this week, but knowing that you are a God who is in control and a God who can touch and heal. We ask that you would ease pain right now, that you would give him comfort and be with doctors as they continue to help figure out what's going on there. Lord, this morning we ask that you would be with us here in our church. As we listen to song, as we listen to spoken word, may you help us put aside the distractions of the things that we have going on from this past week or things from the, the week ahead or, or the months ahead, but to be able to focus clearly on what it is that you have for us today, this moment that you've brought us together here. May we be attentive and may we follow and be obedient to your plan. Lord, as we continue to reach out into a community, that you would give us uh, the opportunities to share with our friends, with our neighbors of who you are and what you want to do in their lives because of what you've done in our lives. Father God, this morning, we just ask you to be also with Pastor Ken and Miss Linda. We thank you for their leadership, the way they shepherd and guide and direct each and every step that we take. Will you give them comfort right now? Be with them as they deal with uh, another grandchild being dedicated. What a great and wondrous time that they are having, I'm sure, giving a child to you for your honor and your glory. Lord, this morning, we just love you, and we thank you for who you are, and ask that you would be with us in the things that we think, the things that we say, and the things that we do. May it be pleasing in your sight. In your name we pray this all. Amen. Sing this with us before you sit down. Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. And every knee will bow before Him. Our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sins of the world. His blood breaks the chain. Before you sit down, turn to two or three people. Say, man, I'm glad you came to church this morning. Hello? Can everybody hear me good? I could probably be loud enough even without the microphone. Just get up here and get excited. How's everybody doing today? 
It's a great day to be at church this morning, and I am thrilled to get to do the building pledge update, which is outstanding. I was telling somebody this morning, I said, I've done this several times on Super Bowl Sunday, and I keep waiting for some of the teams to change, and they never do. So it's good to be back here today. Uh, for those of you that have been here, you know about our building pledge campaign that we're in the midst of right now. Uh, for those of you that are new, uh, we set a goal, if you guys remember, uh, for our building fund campaign for this 11-month campaign to where we would pay the building fund, basically our note payment, our mortgage payment on that, uh, for all 11 months of the campaign plus an extra payment of just principal. And that total came to $149,190. And I sat up here in the fall and we talked about that and what impact that would have on the ministries of our church. Uh, but then we said also, we said a stretch goal would be, and it would be amazing if somehow we could make two extra payments of all principal on our note payment, uh, and that number would be $160,667. Now, we've got the little bulletins that we have here that we hand out, and I'm going to be honest with you. I don't keep my bulletin every week. But I will tell you a bulletin that I have in my home office is the one that Larry Gibson wrote down whenever we did the pledge campaign. And we found out that through that we are currently at an amazing $165,000.760. So amen to that. We can clap to that. Already this year, we have paid an extra $13,031 of just principal which is about one and a quarter extra note payments, and we're only in the first week of February, which is amazing. Amen. So thanks to all of you. The only thing we can think is just to keep pushing forward. I guess our next goal would be to get to three payments. And just in case anyone was wanting to know that exact number, that is 172,143. So we're only about $6,500 away uh, from that. Uh, two things I would say, if you didn't get a chance to make your pledge in the fall or if you are new to our church and want to give, um, obviously for anyone that's been through the Dave Ramsey Financial Peace Seminar or anything like that, you know that every single dollar that we can pay extra in principle reduces the amount of interest that we have to pay on the back end. In fact, if, if we can pay an extra payment every year, every time we can make an extra payment and do that consistently over every year, it saves us well over $100,000 of interest. And as the father of a 16-year-old and a 10-year-old, it also, every time we can do that, shortens the note, and it gets me excited thinking about all the ministries for my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren one day at this church. So if you have not got a pledge card, the pledge cards are in front of you. Um, if you want one, they're right in front of you in the chairs. If you do not designate your gift today, any loose gifts you don't designate, those gifts will go to the building fund and to this year's pledge campaign. And I'd like to ask the ushers to come forward. I, I don't get to call the ushers very often. So I will say this. So I got to speak a few weeks ago at an event of a bunch of college Christian students. And they asked me to come speak, and there was a lot of Arkansas State students there, but there were students from all of these other campuses and places, and so I gave a little talk, and I got this question in the Q&A part. They said, Dr. Hunt, they said, what advice would you have for these college students, these young Christians that are going out into the professional world? So I tried to fill them with some good tips, wear more sweater vests. Sometimes at 22, they don't see the beauty of having a warm core most days. I told them, I encouraged them to start their morning with Diet Dr. Pepper. I don't know if there's any medical things to that, but it always works for me. But one of the things that I said is you're going to move to different places. You're going to move forward. You're going to start your lives. You're going to start your families. And I can't give you a better piece of advice than this. Find a church home. When you walk in the doors, you feel God's love on you. And I said, I'm thankful and blessed, and we're all thankful and blessed to be at a church where we feel that love every single Sunday. Please bow your heads. Thank you, Lord, so much for allowing us to be here to together, to, to gather today 
and to worship you in this amazing facility where we try and carry out your work. Lord, we thank you for all the blessings. We ask that you help all of us in our church. We ask that you forgive us for our sins. And we ask that you be with us today and this week as you always are. We are thankful and humbled. We love you with all our hearts. And it's in your wonderful name that we pray. Amen. Sweater vest only on the stage today. Yes, sir. You're good, Shane. Like a babe when he cries for his mother. Like a child, I was helpless all alone. Then I met the master. Like the blind men who walked in darkness, why had long I had searched for the light? Then I met my master. Now I walk. No more in the night. For all things were changed when he found me. A new day broke through all around me. For Now I am one of his own. I the master. Now I belong to him. Thank you, Ernie. It's so good to see each of you this morning. Some visitors, some friends, some former college students. Has her head down, not looking at me right now. Lindsay, good to see you. All of you as well. Twelve and a half years I've been here. Twelve and a half years I've known Jim Sanders now. And Pastor Jim Sanders, formerly pastor at the Greenbrier Church, retired but not stopping. Uh, he is now the assistant to the DS and helps out. Uh, he passed on his crutches to Pastor Aaron, apparently. He said he's been uh, down with a broken heel and used up all the screws from Lowe's, I don't know, uh, to fix it. But he's here this morning to share with us what God has on his heart for each of us. Pastor Jim.
Well, good morning. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, that title, assistant to the DS, means absolutely nothing. It uh, basically means uh, I'll do what he doesn't want to do. Uh, there's no salary, uh, just a, a, a tiny job description and an office. And I said, I don't want an office. I retired so I wouldn't, get, I wouldn't have to go back to one. So I haven't been in that office in that new building yet. <clears throat> And I'm proud of it. <laughs> I love your pastor. You have a great pastor. And I know you know that. And I, I'm going to tell on myself here. I was his counselor at camp when he was a teenager. I was barely over a teenager. But uh, I was his counselor and have known Ken for many, many years. Love and appreciate his family. And thank you, Ernie, for that song. Wow. Aren't you glad you met the master? Now I have till what, 11? <laughs> Early on in my ministry, one of my kids came to me and said, here's a poem for you. He was a mighty man of valor, a man among men. They gave him 20 minutes and he finished up in 10. <laughs> well, I may not finish in 10, but I'll, I'll try not to, uh, to be here too long this morning. If you have your Bibles and want to turn with me, I'm going to be looking in 2 Corinthians chapter 1 and uh, sharing with you a, a message that Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. We'll begin with verse 1. <clears throat> I'm reading from the New International Version. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the church of God in Corinth, together with all saints throughout Achaia. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. Paul gets hung up on this for just a moment when he talks about how much comfort God can give. And I, won't, I guess I'm here this morning to tell you wherever you are and whatever uh, battle you might be facing, we do have a God that is fighting our battles, and he gives us a comfort to make it through. And so he goes on and he said, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort that we ourselves have received from God. For just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. If we're distressed, it's for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it's for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer, and our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our suffering, so also you share in our comfort. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about the hardships we suffered in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired even of life. Indeed, in our hearts we felt the sentence of death. But this happened, that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. He has delivered us from such a deadly peril. He will deliver us. On Him we have set our hope, that he will continue to deliver us as you help us by your prayers, then many will give thanks on our behalf for the gracious favor granted us in answer to the prayers of many. Paul had written 1 Corinthians, a letter that was pretty sharp and pretty detailed, and he was addressing some issues that, that were happening there in the church that needed to be addressed and he gave them some pretty strong words, and he let them know that he wanted to come at a later date so that he could follow up on these things. Well, in the meantime, there was a delay, and Paul was not allowed to, to get to Corinth as he had planned. And some of his detractors, some of those that, that were trying to undermine the church, began uh, giving rumors and gossip and saying, well, you know, Paul, he's, he can write a good letter, but he's afraid to come and see you face to face. Uh, and so he was writing this letter, and, and later on, as you read the, the, this, uh, he was trying to combat that and let them know that he had their 
good at heart and that he was anxious to get there when he could. But he makes a, a great statement there when he says, you just don't know what was going on in my life. And I think that most of us can identify with that because we don't often just spill out everything. I have found out that you can stand in line at Walmart and hear a lot of things, though, and uh, some of them I sure didn't want to hear. But, but usually we come to church and we've got this smile on our face and, and we don't have a lot to say uh, about what's going in on, our, on in our lives, and this is the place that it ought to be. And so Paul writes the church and he he says listen i was hurt deeper than you'll ever know and and he said i i felt like i was going to die you ever been there i've heard people say that well if i don't get out of this i'm going to die and i think there are times most of us go through things like that and and paul was going through that And, and as i as i think about paul and if you know much about him you recognize that he had been through so much he was shipwrecked. He floated around in the ocean. He was beaten with the Roman uh, rod. He was whipped. He was carried out of one city as if he were dead. And yet he said, I went through something that was more severe than this. I thought I was going to die. I think it's interesting that we can that we can come to church, and that's what Paul was doing. He was coming to the church, and he was confessing. I'm convinced that we sit next to people every Sunday, every time we gather, that are going through some of the hardest things that they possibly could, and we don't know it. And what we need to do, I believe, as a church, is to share these things. And that's what Paul was doing. He was saying, listen, I want you to know this is what I was going through, and and I need you. I need you to be there for me and to help me. And so Paul was saying, I was hurt deeper than you'll ever know. But he said, it's okay, because God wants to teach me something. And he said, he wants me to know that I can depend on the God who raises the dead. Don't you like that? If he can do that, can't he take care of everything else? Paul, I I think if you follow his writings, he could sometimes almost brag. And I don't mean this bad. I, I'm just, he, you know, what was it? Dizzy Dean said, if, 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 if it's fact, it ain't brag. <laughs> he, over in Philippians chapter 3, he says, I, I was a, a Jew among Jews. I was born of the tribe of Benjamin. I, I, I had all of these credentials. And there were times that Paul, it, it said like, it, it almost seemed like he was saying, you know, I, I have enough that I can pretty well get through. But he said, God was teaching me that I could depend on him. I could rely on him. And I think so often in our society, and, and most of us here today have, have probably money in the bank and, and enough to get by and a nice home and it's warm and we have a car that we can get around in. And, and we don't really think so often that we need to rely on God for so much. I'll never forget when I uh, uh, was a younger pastor I went to Joplin, Missouri First Church to pastor and the district superintendent, and I say this tongue in cheek, I found out that DSs can lie and still go to heaven. Uh, he, 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 he might not have lied, but he, he stretched the truth a little bit when he said, now, now when you go over there, they're a little behind in their building payment. When I got there, there was a foreclosure notice on the desk. And I began to stress with that and think, and, and as a young pastor, I thought, well, the pastor just has to do it all, you know, and, and, and take care of this. And I, I worried about it and worried about it and fretted with it and found out there were bills all over town. Uh, uh, they just, just things just were not <laughs> as they should have been. And uh, I was sitting on the front porch of the parsonage there right next to the church uh, one day, and, and I, I guess I had my... Uh, I won't tell you what my wife calls my face that I have, but I was, <laughs> I, I, I was just down in the mouth. And my son, who I think was in about the third grade, came up and sat down and said, Dad, what's the matter? And I said, oh, son, we've just got some 
problems at the church and and I just don't know what to do about it and we're and he said well have you prayed <laughs> no I had fussed but I hadn't prayed and I learned then that I can depend on God I kind of knew it but God came through in a way that in uh, in a month's time we had money come in that took care of the note and we were never late again a and when I it, it's quite a miracle uh, some money came in right ten minutes before I was to go into the banker and try to plead a little bit to not have to get it all where we got it all and when I walked in that banker had a shout and spell <laughs> and I'm always reminded that when I'm in a tough situation and and Paul I think was was reminding us we can depend on God God who raises the dead don't you think he can take care of that financial situation don't you think he can take care of that relationship that is just going south don't you know that he can heal a broken marriage since he called death, since he came out of the, a tomb alive? Don't you know that, that, that he can take care of whatever situation you're in? Jim Deal preached a sermon one time at youth camp, and, he, and his, uh, one of his points was God is bigger than what's the matter. <laughs> Our God is able to take care of wherever you are today, and you can find the comfort that only he can give. So Paul said, I, I was hurt so deep, you'll just never know. I thought I was going to die, but it's okay because he wanted to teach me that I can depend on him. And he basically was saying, I will survive. And isn't that really what most of us want to know? We're going to make it. I'm going to survive. We need to know. And Paul said, we can survive because he has delivered, he is delivering, and he will deliver. That pretty well takes care of it, doesn't it? The psalmist in the 34th Psalm said that the angel of the Lord encamps around them that fear him, and he will deliver them. I'm here to tell you this morning, you'll survive. You're going to make it when you fear him, trust him, depend on him. God will deliver you. The Spear family was an uh, old singing group, uh, I better not say it that way, singing group of days gone by, and Ben Spear sang a song that I, I love. He said, I said, Lord, you, you've already taken me to places some will never see. I know that I've been blessed, but Lord, I must confess, this journey nearly has the best of me. He said, child, I know the miles have got you feeling low. And you question how much farther you can go. The pain you feel is real. And I know exactly how you feel. Because I've been there. I've faced those lonely trials. I've walked those lonely miles. So when you're going through the valley of heartache, once again, you're only going where I've already been. I said, Lord, it's hard to keep from feeling like I do. And I question why the trials you've brought me through. Yet in my darkest hour, I've felt that healing power that only comes from walking close to you. He said, child, it's hard to see the hurt you're going through. And the questions that you ask are nothing new. Sometimes the Father's plan is so hard to understand. There were days I felt the same as you because I've been there. You think we don't have a God that can deliver, that raised the dead, that has been where we've been? Scripture says that we have a high priest 
that has gone through the same temptations that you and I, yet without sin. And he's at the right hand of the Father today, interceding, loving us, caring for us, and he's pleading our individual cause. And so whenever we're in a situation, we know that God can deliver because he's been there and he's taken care of it. And I want to encourage you today to find, seek the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And Paul makes an interesting statement. He says, I'm going to make it by the power of the Spirit that brings comfort. You know, Jesus said, I'm going to send you another comforter. And the Holy Spirit certainly is the deliverer. He's the one that helps us and comforts us. But Paul makes a statement there. He says, and I'm going to do it by the power of the Spirit and by your prayer. There is no substitute for the church praying for one another. I'm still basking in the afterglow of a prayer meeting that we had Wednesday night at the church in Conway. We have a little five-year-old girl that has a a tumor that the doctors have given a very, very dire report. And our pastor just called a prayer meeting. All of us were in their teens, boys and girls, and heard some of the most beautiful prayers from seven and eight year old kids. And I believe we broke through the other night and we're going to see something very special. And I thank God that we have a church and I know you do here, that prays for one another. And when someone stands up and says, you know, I'm going through a hard time, we don't say, oh, we don't want to hear that. Or someone's going through a situation that, 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 that's very personal, and we don't, we don't just push it aside. We pray for each other. We love one another. And we lift them. And, and Paul's saying, that's the way I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it because you pray for me. And that's how any of us will make it. A few years ago in, at Greenbrier, I, uh, I just got to a point that I was as depressed as anyone could be. <laughs> I, I woke up and it was that dark cloud went through the day, I, I went through the process and everything, but it, it just was a constant pressure and I went around every corner and there it was. I couldn't pray it away, I couldn't sing it away, I couldn't praise it away. It was just something that was just gripping me and gripping me and, and I didn't know what to do. One morning I woke up and it was gone. I even looked for it. <laughs> but it's gone. I didn't do anything different. I hadn't done anything, said anything. I hadn't prayed any different prayer. I hadn't slept any different way or eaten anything that, that uh, was some superfood. But two days later, I got a card in the mail from a lady by the name of Mary Freeman. We call her Mother Mary <laughs> there at Greenbrier, one of the godliest women and one of the great reasons we had the success we did at, at the Greenbrier Church. And she had written a little note, Pastor, you were on my mind this morning. And I was praying for you. And it was at the very moment that that was lifted. Paul said, we'll make it by prayer as we pray for one another. The power of the Spirit the comfort that only he can give and as we pray for each other hurt deeper than anyone knows it's okay God's teaching me and I'm going to survive by the power of the spirit and the people's prayer would you bow your heads with me for a moment we ask the pianist to come and Maybe help us for just a moment. Our Father, we've come this morning to worship you, and I, I thank you for your presence.
You said you'd be here. You always are. I don't know but what someone this morning needed to hear this. I need to hear it all the time to know that you are in control and that you are the deliverer. As we bow our heads this morning before you and as you search us, perhaps there's someone that just needs to pray. Just has a burden and has a situation that says, you know, the only way I'm going to get out of this is either die or you deliver me. Maybe this morning you'd like to just grab someone's hand and say, would you go pray with me? The altar's always a place to bring our burdens. I know you can pray right where you are and there's nothing powerful or magical about the altar, but sometimes it just helps to to openly and purposely say, Lord, I hear I, I'm just going to turn this over to you today and I'm going to trust you to take care of it. Thank you, Father, for your presence this morning and for your word that instructs and guides and encourages us. I pray this morning that you will have been honored and that you will do what only you can do. I pray in your precious name. Amen. Brother Aaron. Wasn't that good? Thank you, Pastor, for bringing that word to us. Hey, let me tell you, while everyone's gathering, let me tell you where, what, what's going on around here. Financial peace. Donnie and Amy Mays are going to be teaching this, and it begins one, one month from today, March the 4th. And um, I know some of you have already signed up, and this is a, this is a wonderful thing. If you, if, if you need have, have trouble with your finances, could use some help with your finances. Let, let, let's put it that way. This would be a wonderful thing for you. A lot of you took it last year. A lot of you took it last year. If you'd like a refresher, you don't need to, there's no money involved. Bring your materials and, and, and come and, and get a refresher course on it. Um, sign up at the office, $109. That's for all of your, all the materials that go with it. If you've never taken it before, you need to do that. So sign up for that. Um, three weeks from yesterday is the Wild Game Supper. Remember, this is a wonderful opportunity to bring people from the, from the community, somebody you've been wanting to get to church and just can't seem to figure out what, what, what's going to be the hook to get them here. Maybe a wild game supper is going to be the thing. So that's three weeks from last night. Uh, going to have a special speaker, lots of food. And like you, like, like you know, every, uh, every other year before now has been just men. This year it's everybody. This year it's everybody. So if you can hear my voice, you are welcome to come. And finally, we have membership class coming up starting next week, ne next two weeks. We believe in membership in Church of the Nazarene. doesn't mean you're more of a Christian, but it just means you, you understand what we do and you believe in what we do. And so uh, it will allow you to do some things. It will allow you to serve on the board and do some leadership things like that. So if you're not a member and you're, and you're new here or if you're old here, well, e either way, we would love it if you'd uh, sign up for that. It doesn't commit you to anything. Just come and... Uh, Pastor Ken teaches that class, and you'll be able to hear, hear exactly what we believe. And um, finally, Ladies Cupcake Fundraiser. This is one that I can participate in. Um, the details are in your folder, and uh, you can sign up. Liz Goat is making the, uh, making the cupcakes, and so you really can't go wrong there. Not that anyone can really mess up a cupcake, but we know Liz excels at those. So sign up for those to, uh, to help fund the, the, the ladies, ladies' ministries here at church. Would you stand with us as we sing? Beautiful one. Wonderful, so wonderful is your unfailing love. Your cross is spoken mercy over me. No, I can see. No, we. No heart could fool 
displayed for all to see the beauty of your majesty awakes my heart to sing how marvelous how That's the one we serve this morning. Thank you for coming to church. Get a cup of coffee. Go to Sunday school. Have a great day.